When it comes to setting up a project in Pharos Designer, there are four main tools to understand before starting the layout of your project. 1. Background 2. Duplicate with auto patching 3. Custom fixtures and custom templates 4. Exporting and importing objects Let's go through these items one by one. Especially for large projects, it helps to add a good background image to your layout for guidance. The background files supported are PNG and JPEG. After selecting a background you can make it fit your layout in various ways, or snap size to your background image. It is advised to use a drawing program to create a schematic view of the object. So at what resolution should you render this background image? As an example, here is a sketch of a building that is 100 meters high, 25 wide and has 5 meters padding in the drawing. When using a VLC, it is best practice to try and match the fixture's pitch. The fixture in this example is a tube of 1.2 meters, with 30 nodes inside. The pitch of 1 pixel equals 4 centimeters. With this information we can calculate the pixels required in designer to control it in the best possible way. In this setup, a background image of 875 by 2750 pixels works best. You can use a multiple of this, but note that bigger is not necessarily better and might lower the performance of designer. Let me load the background, and select snap size to background image. I now have a perfect background for my project. VLC maps can be up to over 16 by 16,000 pixels. Every element in a fixture has the size of a pixel. VLC content targets are limited to the HD equivalent of pixels, in any ratio, as shown in the two examples. If you plan on setting up multiple facades in a single map, then having a rounded number of spacing between them is convenient. If you are creating a layout for LPC, LPCX and TPC the fixture has a size, that can be altered, the minimum being 4x4. Let's see how to use this information in this example. Take the case of a 90 meters wide bridge with grazing lighting on the top and on both sides. For convenience I make a top view, and fold out the bridge on both sides. Assume the fixture has two controllable elements per 60 centimeters. When creating a map for VLC, it would result in a 330 by 165 pixel wide background. Using the smallest possible fixture in designer, 4 by 4 pixels, I need to multiply with this size. I should make the image around 1300 pixels wide. In this case I choose to make the fixtures 15 by 5 in size, and therefore my background image should become 5 by 2 and a half thousand pixels. Note that I use the highest value of the fixture for calculation of both height and width. The maximum dimension for these layouts is just over 8 by 8000 pixels, and many layouts can be created. Let me add the image to the layout. Snap the layout to the image dimensions. And adjust the grid to 15, my plan fixture size. I select the fixture, that I've set up at the right size, and add it to the layout. In the next part I'll show you how the duplication feature is used, and perfectly maps to my background. The second tool to understand is the duplicate fixture with auto patching. I can duplicate the fixture, and 150 fixtures of 60 centimeters will perfectly match my 90 meter bridge. Let me undo this. As I have prepared for my installation well, I have made an addressing plan. 25 fixtures per universe, and all universes are set up in a systematic way. If I continue along the duplicate menu, I can select my controller. Specify the quantity of fixtures per universe. And the start universe. This duplicates, and directly patches the fixtures to the sequential universes. As I can verify in the patch window. I can repeat this for the other fixtures on the bridge. The duplication also works when using custom fixtures or fixture templates, additional tools available in Designer, I will explain now. For larger installations, the repetitive pattern might be more complex. This is an example of a facade, where a string-based product is installed logically along the facade. My normal duplication tools would work for a single fixture, but no longer respect the direction in the fourth column. This column runs top to bottom, not following the previous snake pattern. The tool Faros offers for this is fixture templates. Select a LED fixture with the right colors, and right click to start the template wizard. Name it, and adjust it as required. In this example that is 3 pixels wide, and 18 in height. 
When used on an LPC layout, the element dimensions are applied. When used on a VLC layout, each element is represented as a pixel. Used on VLC, the gap will be in ratio to the element size. So if I set my gap equal to my pixel size, the gap between each element will be exactly one pixel. I can then add this template to the map as if it is a fixture. Next I can duplicate. And auto patch this. Making it possible to create this layout in less than a minute. In patch, you can see that the strings are patched as if it were a single fixture. It is possible to edit or duplicate a template, by simply clicking the template in the library. Editing the template allows you to adjust the dimensions and spacing. Once the alterations are complete, update the template to apply the changes on your layout. When using duplicate fixture template, you can amend the complete template as required. For products or power supplies that are channel hungry, you can even create templates that accept multiple universes. For this example template, in the third step I can define if the pixels are continuing through all universes it requires, using 128 pixels per universe, or that is starts at new universe every 80, 100 or 120 pixels. For even more unusual layouts, it is also possible to create custom fixtures. This allows for angled fixtures that perfectly fit the grid. Large fixtures with irregular spacing or irregular split over universes. Or non-rectangular geometries. Custom fixtures have more freedom than fixture templates, and can be used to solve some of the more complex fixture layouts. How to create these are not included in this video, please contact support if you require further help with this. The tools mentioned in this video are all very useful when you are setting up in designer from scratch. But what if you could reuse the data from the installation drawings? With Faros you can import and export data from designer. Let me go back to the example of the bridge, with 1200 patched fixtures. If I go to the menu and select export object, I can export my fixtures, with the selected properties. In a similar way I can export the patch. With the properties relevant for different protocols. For Artnet that will be a universe number and channel, and of course the fixture number. The result is comma separated files. I can open this in a text editor, or in a spreadsheet editor like Excel. In the file we see the first row showing the properties I've added to the file. The following rows are showing the value for each fixture. Equally I can import a data file into Faros. Let's create a simple file that holds the minimum required data. A fixture number to identify the fixture in designer. The fixture type, defined by the manufacturer ID and model ID. And a X and Y position. Let's make some rows and save this as a CSV file. I start a new project, and import this file. Faros can import CSV, TSV and text files, where the data is separated by commas, tabs, spaces or even a custom delimiter. The properties can be listed in any order. I can manually assign a meaning to the different columns. If I assign the top row in the import file with the exact names, Faros will automatically recognize the column's properties. The easiest way to find out the exact names and fixture types, is to make an export file as shown before and use this as a starting point. With all columns set up, I can now finish this import. Using this method I can set up even the most complex files, layout, patching and matrices, in just minutes. With data importing, you can create your setup to be optimal by setting meaningful names and numbers for each fixture. And even for custom properties. When using the importing data method, the real question is how to get a file with the relevant information. See the exporting data video for more details. The next video shows tips for on-site adjustments.